Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Points for about another week before the program changes. The WW program is changing. If you haven't seen my video, I talk all about the new program. I'll link it down below for you. But in the meantime, we're meal prepping. We have breakfast, we have lunch, we have an amazing dessert that's cake. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I do a meal prep every Monday and I upload five videos per week. Check out the description box down below where I will link my recipe website. That's where you're going to find today's recipes and all of my other recipes. Nutrition coaching, where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. I cannot recommend this enough. I've lost over 130 pounds and a lot of that has come from calories and macros. I also have one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So we have cooking to do, three amazing recipes. Let's jump in. breakfast this week, I am making frosted mini wheat pumpkin spice overnight oats. I love frosted mini wheat. I love pumpkin anything as you know, and I have not had overnight oats for so long that I am so excited for these. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First you're going to need some type of jar to make your overnight oats in. I just use these small mason jars. I bought these on Amazon. I will make sure they're linked down below for you. And then you're going to need frosted mini wheats. I'm using pumpkin pie spice. You can use regular frosted mini wheats. You could even use the little teeny mini mini wheats that they sell, whatever you prefer. Milk of your choice. The recipe actually calls for almond milk. That will save you some points. So the points that I put on the screen will be using almond milk. I'm going to use Fairlife though for me that it is worth the extra calories and points because I get some extra protein. You'll need rolled oats, non-fat Greek yogurt, pumpkin pie spice, pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, but pumpkin puree, and then some syrup. So I'm using the Lakanto cinnamon maple. I mean, that's the perfect pairing for this recipe. Don't forget, I do have a discount code for 15% off site-wide on Lakanto. So you can pick up the monk fruit sweetener, the syrup, anything on their website. So I'll make sure that that is linked down below for you. And let's make some overnight oats. I was actually thinking that I may use this Too Good Vanilla yogurt. You could also use non-fat plain, but I think this is going to add a little bit of sweetness to these oats. So it calls for half of a cup, which is pretty close to one of these containers. So I'm going to sub this for the non-fat plain Greek, but again, you could use either one. So to make our overnight oats, we're going to start with one third cup of pumpkin puree our half of a cup of vanilla non-fat Greek yogurt, one cup of whatever milk you decide to use, pumpkin pie spice, and two tablespoons of Lakanto maple syrup. And we're going to stir that together until fully mixed. Now we're going to add in one half of a cup of rolled oats and 25 frosted mini wheats. Again, if you use regular, if you use the pumpkin spice, add all of that in, give it one more quick stir. And then we're going to take the overnight oat mixture and we're going to divide it between three mason jars. So the recipe is going to make three overnight oats. I'm going to pop the lid on my mason jar and then I'm going to give it just one quick shake just to make sure everything is mixed together really well. And then you wanna put these in your refrigerator for a minimum of about four hours. For me, I like to keep it in there overnight. So here are the frosted mini wheat pumpkin spice overnight oats. These look so good. The oats and the mini wheats are really going to soak up all that liquid. So we're gonna have a really delicious pumpkin spice oatmeal in the morning. I get asked a lot about, do you eat these cold? Do you eat these warm? You can actually do it either way. I prefer to eat mine cold. So in the morning, I'm probably going to top mine with maybe some pecans, walnuts. You could even add some extra frosted mini weeds. But I'll go ahead and put points, calories, and protein here on the screen for you. Four 
For my lunch this week, I am making homemade Swedish meatballs. I may pair these with mashed potatoes. I may have the I may have meatballs and rice. I may just have the meatballs. But I'm going to go ahead and prep the meatballs and then I'll figure out what I'm going to serve them with and what vegetable I'm going to have a day by day. But let me show you what is in the Swedish meatball recipe. You're going to need some Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper. I will link my gravity fed salt and pepper grinders down below. We love these. You guys have been loving these as well. I bought these off of Amazon. Super affordable, so I'll link those. You'll need garlic powder and allspice. Some type of oil of your choice. I'm using avocado oil, beef broth, breadcrumbs, all-purpose flour. You'll need whole milk and then some type of low-fat milk or milk alternative, light butter, an onion, fresh parsley or dried parsley, one egg, and a pound of 96% extra lean ground beef. So the first thing I'm going to do is chop up my parsley and my onion. So to make the meatballs, we're adding one pound of 96% extra lean ground beef to a bowl, one half of a cup of breadcrumbs, one egg, our quarter cup finely chopped parsley, and the one third cup finely diced onion, one quarter cup milk, and then all of our spices, some allspice, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And then we're going to stir this together really well. Most likely I'll be going in with my hands for the final mix and to roll these into meatballs. So I'm going to go ahead and spray a skillet with some non-stick cooking spray. Like I said, I'm gonna go in with my hands, finish mixing this together, and then roll it into meatballs and put them into the skillet. Go ahead and put our meatballs over medium heat for about seven to eight minutes. You want to be really careful when you're turning these to, so that they don't disintegrate and fall apart. Once your meatballs are browned, we're going to remove them from the skillet, put them on a plate and set them aside. We're going to use the same skillet to make the sauce. So we want all these yummy crunchy bits on the bottom as part of our sauce. Do keep in mind that your meatballs will not be cooked completely through. We'll be adding them back into the sauce to allow them to finish cooking. To that same skillet, we're adding a tablespoon of oil and two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Then we're adding in one cup of whole milk and two cups of beef broth. Make sure you're stirring that really well so that that flour gets dissolved with the milk and the beef broth. We're going to allow this mixture to come to a boil. We want to be stirring consistently just so it doesn't stick to the bottom or burn and it will thicken as it boils. We're going to add in one quarter cup of light butter and allow that to melt into the sauce. When your so sauce starts to thicken, we're going to add about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then make sure that you're just stirring throughout the whole process and allow that sauce to thicken. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And then we're going to add back in our meatballs. And we're going to allow them to simmer in that sauce for another five to seven minutes or until the meatballs are cooked all the way through. Our sauce will continue to thicken and it will thicken even more once we remove it from the heat. So here are our Swedish meatballs. These smell incredible. I am super excited for these this week. My plan is I'm going to transfer them into a storage bowl once they are cooled. And again, you can serve this with potatoes, rice, pasta, eat them all by themselves. I'm going to add a little bit more fresh parsley to the top right before I serve them this week, but I'll go ahead and put serving sizes, points, calories, protein here on the screen for you. And I am looking forward to Swedish meatballs all week. For dessert this week, for a sweet treat, I'm making apple cider 
donut cake. We are pairing two of my favorite things, apple cider and donuts, and we're making a cake out of it. So let me show you what's in our recipe. You're going to need some no sugar added applesauce, a box of zero sugar or sugar-free cake mix, apple cider, make sure you're not buying apple juice, but you're actually picking up apple cider, light butter, you'll need a powdered sugar alternative. As always, I use Lakanto everything for any type of sugar alternative. So this is the Lakanto powdered, and then I also have the Lakanto golden and the Lakanto granulated because you'll need all three types of sugar. And again, don't forget Lakanto is linked down below with 15% off. You'll need some cinnamon, pure vanilla extract, and some eggs. So to get started on the cake, I've added my box of sugar-free cake mix to a large bowl. I have three quarters of a cup of apple cider and a quarter cup of water, half of a cup of unsweetened applesauce, one tablespoon of Lakanto Golden, three eggs, some cinnamon, and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then using your handheld mixer, we're going to mix until fully combined. We're going to take our cake batter. I always like to kind of scrape the sides, get any leftover mix off the sides. I did grease my bunt pan with some nonstick cooking spray, and we're going to add our cake mix to our bunt pan. If you don't have a bunt pan, you can really use any type of cake pan. This delicious smelling apple cider cake is going into a 350 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. I just took the apple cider cake out of the oven. It needs to cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. While it's cooling, let's make the apple cider glaze. To a bowl, we're adding a quarter cup of the apple cider. And then the recipe calls for about a cup of powdered sugar. Again, this is the Lakanto powdered. I'm just going to add powdered sugar until I have the right glaze consistency. I always recommend adding your powdered sugar little by little because you don't wanna have to add more apple cider with, because that will give you more points and calories. So I just add powdered sugar, stir, keep adding until I, again, have that right glaze consistency. So here's my glaze. I would say I definitely added about a cup of the Lakanto powdered. I'm going to just stir it a little more and set it aside and we'll mix together the cinnamon and sugar mixture. In a small bowl, we're going to add one quarter cup of Lakanto granulated. And then we're going to add about two tablespoons of cinnamon. Mix that all together. And this is going to be the next step in our cake. We'll add some melted butter, add our cinnamon and sugar mixture, and then add our glaze. Once your cake is cooled, we're going to brush about a quarter cup of light melted butter on top. As you can see, I did go ahead and remove my cake from the bun pan. That just helped it cool a little bit faster. You could also put it on a wire rack. And then we're going to sprinkle the cinnamon sugar mixture right on top of that melted butter. And then lastly, drizzle your glaze. Look at how amazing this looks. I mean, this looks like something you'd pick up from your local bakery. Super, super low point and low calorie. I'll go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, protein here on the screen for you. But I know two people who are going to enjoy apple cider donut cake all week. Thank you for joining me for today's WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. I know that I'm looking forward to eating these all week long. All the recipes are on my website, which is linked down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook group. It's free. It's a supportive community. We'd love to have you over there. It's all down below for you. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Monday, friends, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.